There are so many reasons to make sure that our art channeling is meaningful. That moment spent with the paper becomes a meditation, a source of well-being, of growth, without us even leaving the house. Hello, my lovely butterfly, it's France. Welcome to today's journal on Monday, week 218. Today is a little bit different than usual, as I would like to discuss a subject that we very often talk about with the butterfly members, being why our channeling should not be about the pretty spread. Before diving into today's hot sauce, I know that many of you are still searching for ways to actually express themselves in their art channel. That is why you can find all the steps of today's video written out in the blog post about this video, and it is linked in the description of this video. So today I am putting on my art therapist's head to discuss that one topic that is so often associated with art channeling and that I believe to be one of the most important ones in order for art channeling to bring us all that it can bring. And it is the pretty spread issue. Seriously, I often refer to it as the pretty spread syndrome. First off, I am not saying that pretty spreads cannot be meaningful. The point is not to create ugly things either. But just like getting messy isn't enough to be meaningful, well, having a pretty spread isn't enough to be meaningful in itself either. But if the point of our art channel is to be therapeutic, to feel better, to be meaningful and to help us grow, the pretty spread we might end up with should not be the starting point. Because if that is our starting point, then what is the value of that time spent creating if the spread doesn't look like anything pretty we imagined it would look like to begin with? Let's start at the beginning. And that is exactly what I say at the start of each art channeling class that I teach. We are working in a journal. I mean, it is called art journaling, right? A journal is a record of some sorts, of events, experiences, feelings, things we want to remember. We can compare our art journal to a diary, which is a written journal. The definition of a diary is literally a record with discrete entries arranged by date, reporting on what has happened over the course of a day or other period. A personal diary may include a person's experiences, thoughts and or feelings, excluding comments on current events outside the writer's direct experience. We are writing in a diary for the sake of remembering or to help us in letting go. How we are writing all of that doesn't matter one bit as we are doing it just for ourselves. We most definitely do not think of a possible Pulitzer Prize we could win with our writing. Knowing this, an art journal seems simpler to keep as we do not need to verbalize things. It can sometimes be hard enough to know what it is we are feeling, let alone to actually put words on it. Instead, we express ourselves with colors, shapes, textures and patterns, which should be the way to simplify things. But then we call it art channeling. That word in itself, art, can put the bar high in terms of expectations. Add to that our error of sharing just about everything on social media and it can become a source of stress without us even being aware of it, instead of a source of well-being. Especially if we want our art channeling practice to be meaningful. We need to let our deepest self take over and do the talking. And that is where it becomes complicated if the end goal is a pretty spread. There are so many reasons to make sure that our art channeling is meaningful. That moment spent with the paper becomes a meditation, a source of well-being, of growth, without us even leaving the house. By exploring and connecting with our deepest self through art channeling, the practice becomes a form of self-therapy. The process of expression can actually lead to healing. And that is simply not possible with the pressure of performing, of producing a pretty spread. Again, what is the value of the time spent creating if the spread looks like nothing we meant it to look? Let's go back to the comparison with the diary for a moment. We don't write to win a prize. We don't go and say, hey, look what I wrote when we're done writing in our diary. So how could that be the starting point of our art channeling? 
Now, I hear you pointing a finger at me, saying that that is basically what my business is based on, on sharing my spreads. But for each spread that I create, I start by reminding myself that I'm doing this for me. And that when it's done, if I feel like sharing it, I might. Or not. <laughs> it's actually just like singing. I love to sing. In the shower. You will never hear me sing here or on any other social media. And no, this is not a challenge for you to get me to sing. I just do it for myself. Same as my art channeling. My intent when I art channel is always process oriented and not result driven. In order for my journaling to be meaningful for me, letting go of control is a prerequisite. It is all based on the idea that we feel before we think, that we should allow for our choices of mediums and layers to come from within in order for our deepest self to do the talking on the paper. That, however, is a whole other very vast topic that we very often talk about with the Butterfly members during our Zoom hangouts. If you too would like to join those conversations during our creative hangouts, check out the links in the description of this video. And I don't know if you know this, but I even created an app to help you to be inspired to our channel on a daily basis. It's simply called France Papillon. It's available on the App Store, on Google Play. And again, you will find all the links in the description of this video. This whole pretty spread issue is actually the reason that I like to call what it is we do with the butterflies creative soul searching instead of art channeling. First of all, it takes away the pressure of having to perform, of having to create art with a capital A, even if it is an actual art form. Second, it allows for trying and exploring as we are searching. We are searching for ways to express whatever it is we feel like expressing, but also searching our own soul. And that does not mean that this is about being broody all the time or being turned inwards every minute of the day. It is, however, about making sure that we allow our deepest self to talk when we turn to the paper. We allow for all the deep laughs and storytelling and pondering and crying and sometimes even screaming when that feels like what needs to be done to be put on the paper. Now, before diving into tips on how to make your art channeling about meaning instead of about the pretty spread, I would like to ask you to subscribe and hit the bell of notifications for this channel. Not only will it allow you to know when there's a new video here for you, but it also really helps this channel to grow. So here are my five tips to stay clear of the pretty spread issue. First of all, remind yourself that you're doing it for yourself, not to show it to anyone. If when you're done, you feel like sharing it, you still can, but you can decide to cross that bridge when you get there before putting anything on the paper. Second, don't rush into it. You can be running around getting all the daily things done and then dive into your journal expecting it to be meaningful. Take a moment, even just a few seconds, to be in the here and now before you actually start to create. Just a couple of deep breaths can already help you to do that. Third, in order for your art channeling to be meaningful, allow it to be about your inner self. Focusing on your feelings and emotions in your journal will allow you to slow down and to develop some insights into those feelings and emotions without having to put words on them. It is like focusing on the breathing while meditating, focusing on the process and not on the end result. Fourth, go with that first idea that comes to mind. There is no point in going over 25 options when all you need is one. In other words, get out of your own way and trust your guts. This is what I like to call the three seconds rule. And if you would like me to do a video about this, just let me know and comment. I would love to talk about this with you. Five, don't literally copy other people's spread you wouldn't copy their diary, right? Now, it's the same thing for an art channel. That being said, using all those ways of expressions like colors, shapes, texture, and patterns, it is a learning curve. And looking at videos of spreads being made helps. It can be a starting point. 
But from there, you need to make it your own recipe. Just like you would add salt to your taste, use the colors and the shapes and the patterns that match you, that you feel like using. And bonus tip, as Donna Downey used to say, it's just a page in a book. What's the worst thing that could happen? I'd like to add to that. Heck, you might even end up with a pretty spread. I hope all of these pointers will help you to deepen the experience of your art channeling, or as I like to call it, your creative soul searching. And I hope that it will help you make your creative soul searching experience as meaningful as it can be. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Don't forget to like the video if you haven't already, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you back again here next time. Meanwhile, don't forget to put down a layer a day in a mindful way. Butterfly kisses.